Councilmember Wilcox. Yeah, I'd just like to uh, <coughs> give a congratulations to uh, Peter Zahn and Bob Merritt and Bill Kingman. Uh, this particular issue was brought up three or four weeks ago, and uh, through letters and emails and talking and so forth, uh, these gentlemen have spent uh, overtime working on this, and uh, they've come to some pretty good conclusions, and I'm sure that once again the uh, future looks very bright in regards to this being com uh, completed to the satisfaction of the uh, citizens. So once again, Peter Zahn, Bob Merritt, Bill Kingman, people that worked on this, I uh, thank you very much. Councilmember Coffey. Um, Mr. Zahn and uh, Chief Merritt, I am, I am wondering um, about Rookledge. It's a very narrow street, and the whole street is usually parked double-sided, you know, cars parked on double sides. Uh, did you uh, f physically drive the fire engine down that street to make sure that you could get through there? Um, I'm, I'm not happy with no recommendation. I feel, I feel that it should be either parking on one side or alternate parking from odd or even days. And then also, um, uh, um, I noticed that only part of McDonald is considered, only certain areas on McDonald. And I would, I would think that either parking on one side the whole length of that street or like I said, the alternating parking one side or the other odd or even days. I, I would concur, especially with McDonald. There was uh, some neighbors, and beautifully so, they were having a uh, get-together at their home. However, with the parking up and down McDonald, even with my small car, it was difficult to, uh, to, to get down the road to try to get to my home. So definitely we would ask you to take a look at those two streets and just verify those. And if cars aren't on both sides, uh, imagine it, because from time to time they are. Councilmember Coffey, did you have a follow-up question? Well, uh, no, just overall, I, I really think that the majority of these uh, um, recommendations are right on, and those would be the only two streets that I would question that perhaps they need a little bit more um, restriction for parking. Thank you. Can I ask a follow-up question, Mayor? Absolutely. Um, one of the things that we did look at uh, in going through this, and it's in um, the original report, I think, was in July of 2007. Um, one of the things that, uh, that we've talked with with the council um, since that time, and you, I think, recall, uh, council, Councilwoman Coffey, um, one of the things with restricting the whole length of McDonald, for instance, is uh, whether it be alternating or on one side the full length, um, is it does impact a great number of citizens. Um, and so it's just one, one comment that I'd like to leave with the council. We can certainly add that to the list as we move forward. Uh, but it is one thing that uh, I, I'd recommend we take into consideration as we move forward. Thank you. Councilmember Ehrenreich. Yeah, I, uh, two questions here, or actually maybe three questions. Um, the, the, the first is a comment on McDonald. Um, I, 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 have, I remember that the day that the, the new fire engine was delivered, um, some of the council members took a ride in, the, in, in that thing, and I remember Dan Potts was driving, and as we drove down McDonald, we had to physically come to a stop because we couldn't get through, and it wasn't down on the curve area. It was up, up near um, Rookledge area, and it, the, engine, the engine had to come to a stop, and it had inches on either side of it to get through, and it did get through, but it, it, if it had to, <laughs> you wouldn't have been able to go very fast to get through it without, without taking something out. There is a problem there, and it does need to be addressed. And it, it's, it's uh, uh, so I'm, I'm hoping you go back. Could you, in fact, s explain what your next steps are past this ordinance um, so that we know what to expect? Yeah, with the concurrence of council, we'd like to try to essentially work through the areas that are identified in the memo. Uh, the first being is to take a step that, um, uh, uh, Chief Merritt and myself believe there is an expectation of some of the citizens in the area uh, to have that uh, curvature of McDonald um, be taken care of. Um, we have taken a look at that, and again, so from an enforceability standpoint, if we went out and repainted those curves, not only is there a, you know, an impact to staff time and, and cost to do that, but we also uh, wanted to make sure the enforcement piece 
accompanies it, and we didn't find record of that. So that is the first step. Um, uh, based on the council comments this evening, I'd like to go back and work with the chief, actually both chiefs, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, take a further look at, at McDonald as well as add uh, Rooklich to that. Um, we tried to provide some um, order of priority that we had identified to kind of work through things um, uh, based on what we had seen. We can add Rookledge in there shortly after McDonald uh, if the council so chooses. But what we'd like to do is try to make a, uh, some progressions through uh, an identified list um, to whittle down what used to be a list of 33 down to a list of you know, seven or something more actionable um, and to kind of move ourselves beyond that 2007 report. Okay. And, and lastly, when you talked about using the land use process, is that basically where you went back to see whether the sign, correct signage had been installed by the developer? Is that, was that what you're, basically what you're that, That's a good question. Um, the, the original 2007 report, um, and, and I think at that time it was addressed, but the, the, the uh, question that was kind of put in that memo was uh, kind of a black or white. Uh, is there a no parking sign installed? So that question was answered for each one of those areas. Um, uh, what was elaborated on at that meeting was that some of those areas, in fact, did not have no parking signs installed. However, uh, such as Ross Loop around the bulb or the horseshoe and the curvature of the horseshoe, it's designed uh, to not to allow parking in that fashion. So, so those are some of the things we went back and said, okay, here, you know, is identified, shouldn't have parking in those areas. Uh, was it uh, taken care of through either design or uh, implementation of signage? So that's what we went through and verified it. As I recall, uh, two specific areas that had not been identified, we worked with those developers to make sure that occurred.